Hey guys, so we're gonna find some reference for the texture that we're gonna make. Uh, this is actually uh, one of the most important parts of your whole setup because this is where you're planning what you want, what, what kinds of looks you want, um, and basically the whole setup of your texture, the start, the finish, the colors, the shapes. Um, so it's really, it's really important to find good reference so that way you know you're making something that looks real if that's what you're going for. Uh, even just finding reference from other people's art or reference from the real world or the best way of course is just to be able to go out there and take pictures yourself but unfortunately we don't always have that opportunity. So luckily we can use the internet. So we're gonna find some reference for our texture. Um, we're gonna be making uh, a forest floor ground with a little bit of puddles and a little bit of snow. So let's just start off really simple. <clears throat> Type in forest floor ground. Just be very direct with it. And the first thing we're going to want to do is change our search tools to make uh, all the images we're going to find large images. So that way we can actually see the details a lot better in the textures that we're going to be using for reference. Okay, let's see here. What we're looking for right now is some of the, the colors like I had mentioned and a lot of the textures, the different variations that we're going to get. This is a pretty good example. It's got a lot in it, uh, actually. It's got a little bit of the, the muddy kind of dirt like slightly rained, slightly dry look to it with some of the some of the grass in there and some of the the twigs that have fallen. So this is a great example. We're actually going to save this one. Uh, I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now. Tutorial folder reference. All right. So we'll go ahead and save that. Then <clears throat> Let's see, we'll find a few more images because you want a bunch of different reference to see how these things are falling on the ground, uh, how they interact with each other. Like you can see this area, you know there's going to be specific types of trees based off of the leaves that are on the ground, based off of uh, even these pine cones that we can see here. And you can just kind of tell what the environment's like, if it's going to match the environment that you're going for. So we'll go ahead and save this one too. This is a good one. And what I'm what I'm looking for, why I'm kind of skipping over some of these ones is this one right here is like a, a bit noisy. It's not quite what I'm looking for because there's just leaf coverage everywhere and that's that's the other thing is you don't necessarily have to make the texture look exactly like your reference of course. Since we're artists, we want it to have a nice composition and a nice layout and it's not quite so noisy something that has a bit more variation to it but it's still good even to just grab some extra images that maybe you're not using for the composition but just for some of the reference for what's what's in the picture so it looks like someone's made a texture here already this is a tileable from someone um, I won't comment on it right now, uh, just because I'm not here to critique other people's artwork. <laughs> but while we're looking, stuff stuff that is good is stuff like this. You can kind of see how how this these wood chips and these rocks are in the ground like this, with little bits of mud kind of coming over the top of them. Uh, you could make you could see maybe this. Um, had had like as the rain's coming down it's splashing up some of the dirt onto each of the pieces right here onto the ground and it's just got some really cool and interesting looks to it so we'll save that one too maybe I'll use some of this reference for how the dirt and mud is overlapping on the objects on the ground there and I know you're, you're probably thinking like why is he showing us him finding reference? But 
like I said, this is all very important stuff, and it's it's good to even know why I'm grabbing the reference I'm grabbing, and I'm not getting something like this because I know the texture I want, and it's not going to have so much life to it, so much green. Like it's going to be more in the winter time with a little bit of snow on top, so there's going to be a bit of snow coverage, maybe a few puddles, a lot less greener grass, um, a lot more of kind of the, the dead grayer looking stuff underneath and so this isn't quite the texture we're going for either but it's got some interesting details for sculpted geometry and twigs and stuff that we can use in our texture so I'll go ahead and save that one too and you just want just a few a few bits here and there something uh, an amount that you're you're comfortable with thinking okay I can move forward with my texture at this point and I'm feeling pretty good about it already with what we have for our ground area maybe one more of some leaves here's a nice close-up of a leaf because we're gonna have a lot of leaves on the ground in our texture so that's a good one here's a nice pine cone reference in case we're gonna throw one of those into our texture and maybe I'll get one more with puddles so I'll just add puddles to the end of that and see how this looks of course you're not always gonna find exactly what you're looking for but even something close is still nice that's, oh that one's pretty good actually I'll probably go with that one I lost it. Here, oh yeah, that's pretty sweet. I like it. Alright, so I'll save this one too. This is some interesting reference if you want tire tracks and such going through there. But the main thing I'm getting from here is seeing the specular response and the normal detail with how the water is laying in the mud like this. You can see that directly next to the water it's really glossy of course and still pretty wet and slowly as it gets off towards the side it gets drier and drier and so that's going to be a good reference for us when we're making our puddles and then lastly I'll just get a little bit of snow reference in here looks like possibly our image size yeah it got removed so I'll change this back to large And it's not necessarily that you need to search for large images, but you get a lot more detail out of them, of course. This is kind of cool. We can see here that even after the snow has already fallen, more leaves and more debris from the tree up above has come down on top of the snow like this. So that's good detail. That's some good info also. Let's see what else we have here. This is another good one. We can kind of see how the snow is just building up on the top surface like that and how underneath these parts of these branches here there isn't really much snow because of course, you know, the snow can't fall through the wood. It's all pretty pretty common knowledge, but it's just good to see it and reiterate yourself with this information when you're looking for reference for your texture. Uh, this no, this one's not the greatest. Maybe it's a little too dead. Maybe something more like this. It's a good one. I'll grab that one for sure. This is also a good reference to see what our snow is going to look like. Snow's tricky. It's tough <clears throat> because it's got a lot of layers to it. It's kind of like skin. It has a subsurface feel to it because you can kind of see through just the the thin layers and of course it gets whiter and more solid when it's really thick but this is great it's like just shaved ice on there making myself hungry thinking of shaved ice <laughs> alright I think
that's probably good for now. Maybe one more. This one's kind of cool. Oh, look at that. Huh. I almost thought that was 3D for a second. These plants just looked too perfect. <laughs> but this is another good one. Because uh, snow, since it is just frozen water, it kind of reacts in similar ways. Whereas water tends to to clump together and form into puddles, snow kind of does the same thing. Like you can see here that these edges, uh, the snow is all clumped together and you don't have a lot of just kind of little tiny bits of snow in the middle here because it probably is melted and it just doesn't stay together the same way. So this is all, all really good reference. I think that's a good starting point for our reference. So just make sure when you're looking for your reference that you're finding little bits of details and information that helps with all the different parts of your texture. And while you're gathering the reference you can already start imagining what the texture is going to look like in your head. What you like about some of the images, what you don't like. I don't really like this one too much just because the, the whites of the snow are very thin and it looks, this whole texture is really noisy and that's not going to read very well. This, like I said, this is kind of cool. I like how it has some of the wider areas of less detail and then some of the more clumped areas of detail here and there. And so it's just good, like I said, just kind of while you're looking through this stuff, you can, you can eat already start coming up with ideas for your texture. All right, so from here, uh, I'm going to move on and show you guys how you can set up your ZBrush scene and set up the tiling texture for your ZBrush scene and get going from there. So I'll see you in the next chapter.